as far as I can record it. Yeah, okay. Okay, fine. So, as far as I consider that, you know, some people are beginning in Ayurveda, some people have just got a hang of Ayurveda, some people have some, you know, uh, introductions with uh, alternative therapies, as we say, because they have been disillusioned by modern medicine. So, instead of, I think, instead of going very technical into into the theory of Ayurveda, what I would like to do is, is to, you know, present something which is a little bit more you can grasp it in an easy way and then probably move on to some, something technical so that it might help each one of you to make informed choices of which path you want to go. Because currently, because that is most important, there's so many choices around this. So, what, as I always say and begin, Ayurved is not an Indian science, but we were fortunate enough that it was formed in our subcontinent, the place, Indian subcontinent. And it originated from a, from a perspective to understand how universe came into being, how exactly manifestation took place, uh, why exactly certain people in this life are exposed to diseases, why certain people lead an extremely comfortable life, why a perfectly normal couple have a blind child, or why blind couples have perfectly normal child, why a person born into a very affluent family can end up like a crook. And why a person born into a very filthy conditions, you know, can go to very heights. So all these things always intrigue these people that there must be some technical or logical reasoning behind it. It cannot be just a fluke of nature. It cannot be just a play of nature. It understood that even if you know thousands and thousands of people in, in your life, you know, your life is influenced only by 20, 30 people around. Maybe your parents, your few friends. Those are the only people who will influence your decisions in life. You will make or break decisions, you will put up your ego, you will put up yourself just to impress them or prove themselves. So you might know, you might be a big star and you know interact with thousands of people or you might be just a reclusive person who interacts with two, three people. So life ends in that people and this we see iterated over a period and period of time, ethnicities, cultures. Yes. So the whole concept was to understand the scheme of things, how exactly these things came into being. So the first thing as I talk about this theory of five sheets, which I tell everyone before I start a lecture, is that first these people understood that there are certain things which do not grow in our perception. They are there. Like for example, mountains. So when we are born, we see the mountains. They are there. They have not been, we cannot see them growing. We do not see them destructing like the Himalayas or the Matterhorn. It is still there. But logically, we understand that sometimes they must have been formed. Sometimes they will go. Science proves it. So we understand this, these things constitute a mass. From the second level of existence, we come across things which have a mass, but which we seem like growing, like plants. They constitute of a mass, but we see them animating. We see them growing towards the sunlight. So they say this is a second layer of existence. Between then comes the third layer of existence where we see people having mass things having mass, they are animate, they are moving from one place to another place and they are exhibiting emotions like animals, they exhibit emotions. But these emotions are very crude. It's like if you take a cub away from a tiger, you know, it is not going to think whether you are taking it to feed it or whether you are taking it as a force, it is going to attack you. There is no logical reasoning in it. Then we come to this fourth level of existence, what we call as humans, where we manipulate our emotions as per our logical reasons. For example, if, if you are angry on someone, you manipulate it. You think about the consequences. You pick and choose on whom to show your anger, on whom to not show your anger. So this manipulation of emotions is the cause of all diseases in humans. You can call it energy blockages, you can call it stress, you can call it wrong choices in food, whatever it is. So this manipulation of emotions was understood as a main thing to cause diseases. Getting voluntary control over these emotions was a part of yoga. We will not move over to that part because we will restrict it just to the diseases part. So, understanding how exactly things work, how exactly these emotions control your body, formed the basis of what we call as Ayurveda. Because it understood that in our body there are certain micro entities, we might call them hormones, we can call them secretions, which are influenced by the day to day decisions what we make in life. For example, like if you eat every day for 2 at 2 p.m., 
say 10 days, 12 days, 13 days, you eat at 2 p.m. There is certain juice which is secreted in your body. Now suddenly you make a choice and you don't eat at 2 p.m. You go hungry in the afternoon. The juice is still going to be secreted, but it has got nothing to digest. So it will ch change something in your body. It will change the entire dynamics in your body. It will change the way your kidney is excreting out things. It will stop it. It will say, I'm not getting food. You stop excreting. It will tell your intestine, okay, don't start dis disposing food. Stop. You know, because the food has not come. And suddenly, because it goes into haywire, your body is exposed to diseases. So first thing was understood is to understanding this time cycles in life. And this is beyond ethnicity, beyond geographical locations, wherever. It was understood that as the sun rises, the, your system starts opening. As the sun sets, your system closes. So it, after the sun sets and your system closes, anything you put inside your body is either going to get converted into toxins or is going to get absorbed as fats, but it is not going to provide you nutrition. So those timings were understood. Second thing they understood that each thing might have different, different properties. Curd might have different property. Meat might have different property. Grass might have different property. But we cannot go on cataloging each and everything. We might catalog it to a particular sense, but the manifestations are endless. Now we are combining so many things and creating new, new cuisines. We have a molecular cuisine, French cuisine, this cuisine, but they said, what is the base? If I have to understand every digestible item in the world, whatever it might be, I need to be at the foundation of it. So it understood that nothing precedes the six days. Everything, whatever in this entity is there, whether it be human flesh or grass or salt or whatever you want to eat, whatever people eat, it is not beyond the six days. It might, the six days are sweet, sour, spicy, you know, a bitter taste, astringent taste and salty taste. So beyond this, there are no tests. Tomorrow, even if you go anywhere outside the solar system, you go to say Jupiter, you go to, if life is found somewhere outside the solar system, in fact, transport you there. And if I tell you, okay, Describe to me some things which are there. You can describe it in form of this taste. You can say, okay, this thing which I'm tasting has this, this taste. So I'll understand. Because if you say it is like spaghetti, a person from India might not understand it. But if you tell the six taste, I'll understand. So they said, we want to create the fundamentals. So there are six taste. Okay, what happens when we take this six taste? So they understood that there are only two potencies. Either it may have a cold effect on the body or a hot effect on the body. But eventually they understood there is nothing called as cold. Cold is absence of heat. So there are opposing properties, but one is absence of other. You cannot make cold colder. You only measure heat. So even if you go to like minus 240 degree Fahrenheit, you are measuring heat. You, this place is warmer than outside. This place is cooler than outside. So they started debating on these metaphysical concepts because they wanted to arrive at something called as fundamentals. So they say whatever food we are taking inside, it is just altering certain temperatures in the body. It is either making something hot, either it is creating heat or it is dissipating heat. It is not creating cold. Nothing can create cold. Even if you have to create cold in this system, you have to dissipate the heat. You cannot make something cool. So they understood that there are only two fractions. One is hot and one is cool, like the sun and the moon. When the moon comes, we see the absence of the sun. The sun is always there. It is not gone. We perceive it to be gone because we see it from the moon's light. So similarly in the body, they understood that whatever you eat, whatever the six taste we eat, it gets converted into these two forms. It has the effect only of these two forms, either hot or cool. And eventually, this is how the digestive system works. Then they started cataloging everything on these two systems. How exactly the taste of the entity is, what kind of an action it might give in the body. And after digesting, what kind of an action it might give in the body. So they said, these are the only three things which are available in nature. So to understand any entity, if you know the taste, we'll understand by assumption what kind of an action it gives on the body. So we can manipulate its action. And apart from this, certain things might be some that, you know, they might act according to this point, but they might have some direct action. So let us say that I have a thing which is sweet in taste. When it goes into the body, it is giving a hot action. So I am supposing it will give me something which is going to cause me refreshness. It is going to make me more refreshed. 
but it might have a unique action that it might put you to sleep. So those were certain variations they were found, but which were very, very rarely seen. Most of the times, anything which is found in this nature, any entity, living, non-living, metal, mineral, anything what you see can be explained by the six days. This gave them an immense potential to utilize anything that was there around them. So we see references in Ayurveda where people have used mercury, people have used gold, people have used silver. If somebody of you have read about alchemy, they were used as base metals. Even these gemstones what you wear nowadays, they were first not used as gemstones. They were first used as internal medicines. After that in Jyotish, what we call as Vedic astrology, they were accepted to be worn externally. But first they were found to be taken internally in form of uh, pulverized powders. You see coral or sapphire. So everything was used. And that is how this system evolved. But this system did not evolve on symptom and medicine basis. What we see nowadays, there is a lot of a myth that, you know, anything that is chemical is bad. Anything that is herbal is good. And this is not what Ayurveda tells you. It tells you you have to follow the principle. Like if you get fever, so you require something to bring about perspiration. You require to take something which brings about perspiration. Now you can take a basin or you can take a paracetamol. It doesn't make a difference. You have to understand why you are taking and what is its long term implications. But here what is happening is that we are we are taking a modern symptom and we are substituting it with a herbal substitute. So you are getting an inflammation but you are saying I am using term, I'll use turmeric, I won't use an anti-inflammatory. You are saying I am getting cholesterol but I won't use a statin, I'll use cinnamon. So these things in the long run do not give you any benefit because that approach is not there. So the entire approach was to understand how your system works in general from the time you have got up to the time you have slept, the food you have eaten, what it is digesting, what it is making. First and foremost thing it always tells and always tells that life has got nothing to do with your emotional and financial problems. The moment you are born, you are going towards death. It is an illusion that you are growing up and falling down. So you have to take that journey towards death. How comfortably you want to take it, how independently you want to take it, the rules are given in Ayurveda. And these rules are not only related to the Indian subcontinent. These rules are very much fundamental and can be applied anywhere where intelligent life can be formed. So as I come back to the first rule, as I said, that your body works as soon as you get up in the morning. And as soon as the sun goes down. So let us say, for example, that everyone gets up at 5.30 a.m. in the morning, which is the ideal time to get up. Then 12 hours after that, by 5.30 or 6, your system shuts down. Now, if you say, if I get up at 8, so can I eat at 8? No. So even if you get up at 8, your system will shut down by 6.30. But you will have that much less time. So you will be cramped. So always better that you get up at 5.30, just one hour before the sun rises. You get up at 5.30, you have your breakfast around about 8, you have your lunch at around about 2, you have your dinner, finish it off by 6.30. And after 6.30, if you feel you're hungry, you have some liquids. So if you do that continuously, your system is working in harmony. You don't require any herbs, any medications for yourself. Second important thing it tells you is the use of water because we use a lot of water. But there is a technique of using water. A lot of people don't know that it requires a lot of effort on the body even to digest water. So that water has to be used judiciously. If you drink water with food, you're going to get indigestion. If you drink water before food, you're going to get indigestion. So he says whatever time you want to eat, whenever you eat 50 minutes before, one hour afterwards, it specifically says 50 minutes. It doesn't say one hour. 50 minutes before, one hour afterwards, you should not be drinking water. That is the space you should not be drinking water. You should always drink water sip by sip. You should always mix the saliva. So the saliva is the biggest boon given to you by nature. We don't use it. So if you use it, your body gets lot of immune mechanisms, immune products in your body, which fights your system, which makes your body strong. So drink it that way. So this is the second system which you have to follow. First system which I told you, get up at 5.30, you know, have your breakfast by 8, your lunch by one, you finish your dinner, solid dinner, whatever you're having by 6.30. After that, if you feel hungry, have some liquids. The second thing what we say is use of water. This water, if you use very well, you know, 50 minutes before you're not drinking, one hour afterwards you're not drinking, you're drinking sip by sip, you're drinking in limited quantities. 
then it enhances your system. If you drink water in high quantities, it is going to disrupt your joints. If you drink water in a standing position, a lot of women run and drink water. It is going to disrupt your joints. You are going to get a heavy uterus. You are going to get fibroids. Probably if, if it's in the early stage, you might develop this soft tissue enlargements. So these all things will happen. Third thing it says is that whenever you prepare food, always use elements which are nature made. Don't use elements which are man made. So for example, cooking vessels. So we say use earthen vessels. You know, support the industry. If you use earthen vessels, if you use vessels which are made from soil or earth, they give you much more flavor to your food. They help you absorb the food in a much better way. Because, because of the sun, the soil over a period of time, you know, it enriches itself. It gives you all the minerals, the calciums, whatever you want. And nowadays we see as even if the society is getting more and more progress, you're getting these deficiencies of vitamin Ds, vitamin B12, everything you're getting. And you're taking the shots, you're taking... But even if you cook in earthen vessels, this, these things won't be there. If you don't use earthen vessels, then use brass vessels. If you don't have brass, then use iron vessels. If you don't have iron, then if you want to make a trade-off, use stainless steel. But still, it contains heavy metals. So stay away from anything which has heavy metals, like stainless steel which contains nickel and cadmium, or you have these aluminium vessels. So don't use them. Third important thing when you are cooking food, is any food which is not exposed to sunlight and wind, will is not going to give you benefits. It is going to clog your systems. So if you are cooking food in a pressure cooker, you are cooking food in a vessel which is not exposed to sunlight or wind, it is not going to get digested. So let let it get exposed to sunlight. That is the main reason when you are cooking the food, you do not cook it at night. You cook it before sunset. The more you cook your food late night, the more it is going to have your system. This is very much important for people who are suffering from inflammatory disorders. And a lot of us suffer from inflammatory disorders. Inflammation occurs at a young age and eventually as we progress in life, it converts into disorders like gout, rheumatism, Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, ALS, you name it. These are not happening because of virus and bacteria. These are happening because your body is getting more and more inflamed. So these things, this kind of things will reduce the inflammation in the body. If you have kids at home, you start these processes at early age, you will see that their brain develops very fast. They do not become hyper. You know, a lot of time we see children who become very hyper and nowadays because of the modern healthcare system, we label them as ADHD, autistic or, you know, de delayed development. But these things will never occur. I'm talking from my experiences, which I have treated in my 13, 14 years. So these small, small things, if you, if you start, they will, they will grasp things very quickly. They will be more cheerful. They will be more playful. They won't fall sick. They will gain very good immunity. You don't have to give them shatavari or any other kind of shots. You know, these things will help. These simple things. If you teach them when to drink water, how to eat food. Third thing, always as I go, that when you sit down and you eat food. Now, this is not something which is fundamental. When you sit down on the floor and you eat food, you have a center of gravity which is working on your stomach. So because you are sitting down, it pulls, it tells the liver, it tells the digestive secretions to secrete the juices. As I say in earlier times, in the European and the Western world, it was very cold outside. You did not have this controlled environment. So, you know, it was so cold outside that you know, if, if, if I make someone sleep on a, on a ice cube in, a, in an air-conditioned environment, he's going to get a stiff back. So because of that reason, people could not sit down. So they invented dining tables. I used to sit on the dining tables and to eat food. That is the reason what happens when you sit on the dining tables for a long period of time and you eat food. Your system is clogging, is, is getting clogged. It, is, it was okay in earlier times when you used to eat very fresh foods, you know, they were very easily cooked. But nowadays you are not. You are taking, bringing foods from the market, you are storing them in your refrigerator, you are cooking them, you are making them more cheesy, you are making them more saucy. So this food becomes much difficult to digest. So especially in young children. We advise, and there's a lot of people of my clients who are staying outside India are picking up these practices. You know, if your children, you want your children to be, you know, not to be obese, to be very, very fit, make them a habit to sit on the floor and eat the food. Anyways, a lot of people do yoga. So, you know, Padmasan, Siddhasan or Sukhasan is, you know, you're learning. It is not that it is new for you. But if you, if you're learning it, then instill it in your children. Sit on the floor, eat the food. Do not be distracted during eating the food. 
when you are sitting down and you are putting on the TV or listening to the music, the blood supply is getting cut from the uterus. It is going to your ears. Your brain is working. So enzymes are not secreted. These are all cumulative poisons. We don't think much of them. When the disease arrives, we go to the doctor. But these are the leading causes because diseases can be cured. Disorders cannot be cured. If I have a disease like typhoid, tuberculosis, I can get it cured. Disorders are created when your organs start becoming weak over a period of time. And you are making them weak. It is not that they are getting weak on their own. So these are the systems. Very simple thing. If you sit on the floor and you eat the food, you have got the complete effect of gravity working on your system. If you sit in Padmasan, well and good. If you cannot, simply if you sit, sit down eat the food, you will see that it is getting digested very well, you are not getting post as post reflux, a lot of people have they eat food, you know, they get this reflux, they cannot stand, they have to take mucane gel or something in the night, it's, this won't happen and the bowel movements will be very clean. You know, a lot of people nowadays, they have recurrent urination, when they eat food, they have to go to the restroom after 2 hours, 3 hours because of urine, they eat a lot of salty food. This thing also happens because your bladder muscles get weak when you sit on the table and eat food. When you sit down, all your bladder muscles, your intestinal muscles get a workout. So that is one thing. If it is possible, these are small, small tips if you can do. If not, of course, you can sit on the table and eat food. But because we are talking about all the basic things here, so these are the tips. The third thing which I always say is the use of salt. Salt, whenever you use, use natural salt. Don't use the ready-made free flow non-hygroscopic salt what you get. A lot of time we use this free flow salt because it is very easy to maintain. But if you take out the basic properties out of it, it is going to cause you problem. It is going to clog in your system and cause you kidney disorders. If your kidneys start becoming weak, then your cortisol levels start rising. Cortisol levels start rising, you will start having panic attacks, you will start having fibromyalgia, you will start having pains, you will start having mood swings. So the main reason is just by removing, making this small change, instead of putting salt after cooking the food, put salt before you cook the food. Use hygroscopic salt, use natural salts like Himalayan crystal salts or any salt if you get. If you don't get Himalayan crystal salt, no matter. Even if you get sea salt, still it is fine. But get it in entire form. It's not required that you have to be hell-bent on Himalayan crystal salt. Just crush it, use it before cooking. You know, the impurities go off, you get the taste. So this right kind of salt, when it goes into your system, it changes your hormonal metabolism. You know, it tells your thyroid gland, it tells your pituitary gland to secrete the hormones in the right. Very important for women. Also important for men, but very important for women who go through a lot of hormonal changes every month. So these four things, as I said, first thing is to getting up on time. Second thing is the water methodology. Third is the utensils. And fourth is the use of salt. The fifth and the foremost thing which everybody knows but I'll still put used to it is stay away from refined sugar. Whatever sugars you want to use, use natural sugars. Use jaggery if you know how it is prepared, which is a natural form which is prepared from sugar cane. It is an intermediate process before the molasses is created. It's a very beautiful thing. It's very easy to digest. If you eat sugar after you eat food, a lot of people want to eat sweet after they eat food. You know, a lot of people have a sweet tooth. Once they finish their lunch, they want to eat something sweet. If you eat sugar, body has to work 40 times more to digest it. If you eat jaggery, it, it will digest your food. Simple difference between the same thing. It, both are created from sugar cane, but different properties. So if you eat little bit of jaggery after you eat food, it will not only enhance your system, it will increase your blood count by 10%. Very simple difference. Your use rock sugar. A lot of time you find sugar which is naturally available and it is just prepared. You don't have to process it in the factory. This refined sugar, what you get, it has to be processed into a factory. It has to go through a lot of procession. This rock sugar is sugar which you directly get. It is not available a lot of time here, but in certain countries it is imported. This is most of the time used in the higher uh, temple sections. You know, if you if you, if you go into, into certain temples and all, you will be able to get to see it. It is called a sugar candy or rock candy. It is a natural sugar. So that also sugar sometimes you can use, but the best option is to use jaggery or you can use honey. Sometimes if you really want to create some confectionery, sugars are fine, but always see to it that make it a point that you are not using it much of the time in your preparations and because it is the biggest source of inflammation. If you can just cut out sugar from your system, you will be saving yourself a lot of mental and physical disorders. Third thing is as I always say that earlier times as we see the American history 
nothing was produced here you know first the initial farmings was of corn then wheat and because it was such a vast land people had to travel miles to get food so what they used to do they used to take the flour put water in it and ferment it for a period of four days five days six days and then we have to create bread so bread and cold cuts or cold meats were the only source of nutrition as the industrialization happened american economy grew you know a lot of imports started coming so you of course people from different kind places of the world came here they brought their own cuisines they brought so you got exposed to a lot of spices lot of vegetables but for a major period of time till 1960s 1970s the major major food pattern was this so what happened these things when you eat it leads to severe constipation leading to severe constipation constipation it it gives rise to colon cancer and remember one thing every cancer whomsoever you suffer from that genes are there in each one's body it is not that you suffer cancer of your own every day you get a cut your body goes through cancer when you get a cut till that wound is completely healed you are in a state of cancer the moment that wound heals it sends a signal to the brain that the wound has healed now stop the production of cells when that signal is bypassed uncontrolled production of cells starts and you get cancer so it is nothing outside the body it is created inside the body and when you use this kind of fermented things when your gut has been exposed to a lot of trauma because of this constipation you use inflammatory things this signals get misled they do not reach the brain and therefore if in your family someone has suffered from cancer or a history of cancer and if you if you are indulging in such things you have getting long term constipation you are using lot of sugars or you are craving for sugars very likely you will develop some sort of it so those are the things we always see in the treats that if you if you cut these things away from your day to day diet you know you can prevent your family from this disorders so these are the basic levels if you follow very well in in most parts of your cooking the vessels the way you put in the salt the way you use the sugar the time you eat the way you cook the food it will go a long way in keeping the body healthy after then we come to the level of spices spices what we are are used to enhance your food and spices what we use because they are highly medicinal we use it as a part of our system the whole concept of using these spices is that you don't have to rely on on herbs which you cannot have an access to you want to go to ayurveda and you want to use a herb which is very exotic or which has to be imported from india or let us say china it will cost you 10 times more we will we'll talk about general thing those who can afford it is fine but if it is going to cost you 10 times more you are not going to get it in an entire form because entire herbs are not supposed to be exported so you'll get it in a powdered form so once you powder a herb it is going to be mass powdered it is not going to be powdered by hand it is going to be powdered in big pulverizers so it will throw away the essential oils so eventually you are not going to get any benefit so why not use these spices which are equally that good you can get it in entire form and you can get the same benefit so like this there are a lot of spices what around this but certain spices what you eat in your food you make it food for example if you are if you are a fish eater you like lot of fish always make it a point to rub your fish with fennel because it takes out the toxins and the phlegm from it if you don't eat if you eat fish and if you got an allergy with fish you are more likely to develop disorders like psoriasis uh eczemas arthritis gonorrhea all these things will happen if infertility miscarriages if seafood is not digested so always make it a habit that you make some powdered fennel to, you know whatever you seafood you bring whatever options you get you know just mix it with it keep it there stay it put for like half an hour or something like that then wash it you will get a very good flavor also your hands also won't stink and it will be more easily digestible more lots of time when you eat fish you know lot of time we bake the fish with lot of juices sauces something so we don't get but if you are really aware if you eat the fish after one hour two hour you get a burning sensation or a mouth which is foul smelling the reason is because it in, it it causes lot of pressure on your digestive juices because fishes do not have blood anything that does not have blood is going to put lot of pressure on your blood system so 
you have to always make it more digestible similarly when we come to meat if you are using lamb you are using pork always put fennel in it because fennel helps in breakdown of tissues it will help you to clear the muscle fibers in a easier way so it for that much less thing your body has to do else it is lot of pressure on the body to digest this kind of meats so what happens is that if you eat this meats regularly the body has to divert the blood from particular organs to the stomach and the moment a particular organ is devoid of blood body is devoid of blood it becomes cold in the moment it becomes cold you know it loses some part in its dies it happens at a cellular level it might not have an at a complete level so the moment again it starts rejuvenating it doesn't function well it misses a misses a beat therefore whenever you eat meat and if it heavy meat you feel like going to sleep you know you don't like want to do anything else that should never happen therefore when you use this simple spice fennel then it will make it more digestible similarly there are spices like cinnamon spices like cardamom which help you disinfect meat i'm just talking about the meat i'll come to the vegetables a lot of time you bring meat from from the cold storage very few people have access to fresh fresh meat most of the meat what you procure you get from the cold storage always make it a habit that whenever you bring this meat you prepare some water by putting some uh, cardamom in it boil the water with a little bit of cardamom maybe a little bit of pepper if you want and soak that meat in it for a period of like 2 to 3 minutes it should not be boiling hot water otherwise your meat will start disintegrating but it should be fairly warm water then take it out wash it with cold water and start it this helps get rid of all the sluggishness which has come in meat because it has been frozen over a period of time its juices gets packed so when you put this cardamom water in it the juices start separating you will see that your food has got a completely different taste people will appreciate the same dish but in a different way so it becomes so tender that you require less heat to prepare it so more heat you prepare put inside the juices start burning the more juices start burning that heat goes the same thing what happens with a microwave so we did an experiment in india we took like 20 plants of basil 20 20 plants and one plant was watered by water boiled and cooled down normally and one with the microwave water so the microwave plants died within a day the reason is because the microwave burst opens your cells the uh, molecules and reconstitutes it again so it is not a natural way to heat up things there are a lot of people who also heat up water in microwave when it is a cold time so if you put that water inside you are going to cause lot of damage to your liver and kidneys these are simple simple things i won't talk about big because there is no use in giving you pinpoint remedies so those anybody can give you so these are small small things which which you have to understand and don't use microwaves don't use unnecessary ovens unless and until it is required for baking and similarly wherever you can use hand pounding to create fresh juices don't take a big portion and put it in a blender unless and until it is required most of the times we make meals for three or four people in the house so that much is fine the less amount of steel you use in your vegetables the more beneficial will uh, the benefits you will get from the food the more amount of steel you use in any kind of vegetables the more amount of poisons you are putting into your body i'll give you a very simple example there is a fruit called guava peru is called guava right okay so there is a fruit called guava if somebody must have been eat, nowadays lot of people eat it so it is a very good medicine for the heart if you eat guava every day it is a it is a strong medicine but lot of people cut it with knife the moment you cut it with knife it is going to clog your arteries the same fruit if you eat it like this it is going to clear your arteries so a lot of people who have this coronary heart disease when i give them this guava fruit they become our doctor has told us not to eat guava the same fruit unclogs the arteries pomegranate if you eat the fruit it will lower your eyesight the same fruit juice if you take out with hand it will increase your eyesight you can do this experiment and see so the way also you are processing this things matters a lot why i am telling you all these things because these are the things we are using every day in our life so this leads to cumulative poisonings 
medicines you will use once or two twice in your life one month two month you will take so don't rely on it do these small small things like cinnamon as i told you cardamom i told you about fennel there is another beautiful uh, spice which we call as fenugreek it's a very bitter spice but it's very important i i, I recommend this spice for every woman you know each if you eat most of this fenugreek your uterus will never slug you know it will it will never become heavy it will always keep it in tone and if your uterus is proper you will never suffer from any post menopausal pre menopausal problems you will not suffer from obesity you will not suffer from bone loss you will not suffer from osteoporosis or breast cancers every risk is reduced by that simple spice women do not gain or lose weight because of exercise or diet i always make it a point and tell people you will never lose or gain weight because you are of a diet or exercise it's a no use we will do you won't because each month your body has to prepare eggs and certain resources are required if those resources are not met body is going to prepare them anyhow it doesn't care if you look good or you do not look good it is going to create egg so if that thing is not taken into account you are going to be diseased so the simple remedy which you can use is this is the magic magic remedy what i call is this seed each night if you soak 1 teaspoon of this uh, uh seeds in let us say a ceramic bowl and add boiling water to it the first thing in the morning as you get up just drink this water always remember to mix the saliva don't gulp it down then chew these seeds and follow it with the water stay put for 15 20 minutes that's about it you need to do this for 3 months you will see a drastic change in your system if you follow the dietary rules which i have told you if you have fibroids if you have got myomas they all start disappearing unless and until they have become like hard tennis balls they all start disappearing your periods will improve your libido will improve your mental state will improve you won't get more mood swings this very simple herb you do not require to take lavender or whatever it is this simple herb if you are preparing bread if you are preparing a dough you know in your house always see that you are adding like 1% 2% of this seed powder in that dough when you are preparing it for once you do it it makes it even more digestible so you have this flour right which you are preparing bread or dough whatever you are creating in your house so always add this see to it that you are using less and less white breads what you get from the market if you have go for brown breads you know see to it that you are getting from a local bakery whom you know who is preparing it well if bread forms a major part of your diet if you are from different ethnicity who prepares doughs at home by flour then always make it a point to put this little bit of fennel in your but always as a woman always use this in your dough it always give you much more benefits so this is one more tips which i can give you this also if you which other herb we have we have ajwain ajwain yeah ajwain yes so there is this this one herb um, i don't know much of you are familiar with this but the, you get lots of varieties of this we call it ajwain or bishop's weed but it is a very similar to caraway seeds though both are different but if you don't get this you can always use the caraway seeds also which called as caram caram so this is an excellent medicine for any spasmodic disorders you are getting pains during menstrual cycles crampy pains during menstrual cycles very simply take 1 teaspoon of this boil it in water and drink it you can add little bit of asafoetida you want very quickly your pains will disappear even if this you are not getting labor pains just make a paste of it and apply it below your navel your labor pains are not coming some woman is not going through she going down just apply it the pains will start coming this is such a wonderful herb that if you chew it one hour half an hour after every meal it is going to digest it so it is a very beautiful spice to keep in your house if you don't have this you can keep a equivalent of it which is caram carvi or caraway seeds it might not have that profound effects like this but still it is a very good digestive and calming it is if you have got a gas block just use it chew it off it will go off take little bit of salt chew it the gas block will go off so this is a so it's bishop it's a bishop sweet to be exactly weed bishop sweet it's called as ajwain there are very lots of varieties of it around the world but this is to be give you the precise botanical english name this is bishop sweet 
which is found it's a little bit strong on taste if you chew it chew it you'll see it is a little strong on taste but it's very good uh, even if this though what she was doing is smelling this if you got a lot of this common cold running nose just put it in poultice warm it and smell it you know your cold will stay put it is that that instantaneous effect you get from this this simple herb so this is like a little bit of overview of certain herbs and how exactly this system we follow now you people my yourself must have read lot of things and have your own questions if you do have any questions you know you can put so we can take this conversation ahead and from your questions others can also benefit because i feel you people stay here so whatever your questions would be would be limited to this geographical locations which might help lot of people from my point of view i am trying to give an overview of my experience in treating people around the world which might not be limited to this part so I've tried myself in this past 15 20 30 minutes to give an overview of something from this land which might benefit you because tomorrow if you are trying to practice this as professionally or you are just want to help the people around you you know that that kind of an application will help you out because once you start making those changes people around you ask you why you are make those changes they want to incorporate it themselves so it should be a responsible share of information it is not that i am doing this you do this there are even certain things with this herbs like what we say garlic a lot of people take it but if you are on certain drugs like warfarin or blood thinners and you take garlic what happens is that it might increase the action of warfarin so somebody someone just hits you on the stomach like this you can get an internal bleeding you can end up in the er and you won't know it has happened because of garlic so those things are also there it is not just because they are herbal it is safe in chemical it is bad you have to understand everything has the same properties the six taste what is there in this bishop's weed the same six taste are there in your paracetamol or ibuprofen or whatever you are taking everything acts in the same way some is a direct action these natural things have an act, intelligent action which because they are natural they are easily found in nature so there is a one to one connection because we have no all have been originated from the same form so body absorbs it in a much better way because it is chemical man made it directly bypasses like i say the free flow salt it is man made you take it out so what happens is that a salt cannot be made free flow without the addition of aluminum silicate whatever it might be there is nothing called as a natural free flow salt aluminum silicate has to be added and if you cannot digest it well it is going to clog your kidneys if you are giving your small child alum this free flow salt he is going to get more cranky if if he has got autistic trait he is going to develop it within 5 months so this is the reason this is how much damage a salt does so also understanding what you are buying why you are buying creating a pool of things which which you use for 70% of your day to day activities and understanding the source of it from where it has originated what is the best form how it can interact with the medications i am taking will give you a healthy and a balanced life rather than only you know relying on certain uh, herbal remedies which are which are innumerable so you cannot pinpoint and say this is helping me that is helping me because you are doing too many things you are you are on your conventional medications then you are doing yoga you are doing naturopathy you are doing aromatherapy sometimes crystal therapy some herbs so it confuses a lot instead of doing this unclutter your mind all these things are not required even ayurveda is not required because ayurveda is not about doshas or about herbs it is about this principles of how to create an independent lifestyle those all things are let them remain for the people who are you know who are practicing for if you, if you follow this very simply not eat after sunset eat on time then your body converts it into proper juice understand in, in the body there is nothing called as vegetarian non vegetarian whatever food you eat has to be converted into a juice the juice has to be identified by the body as nutrition it is independent in yours it might be a ph of 7.1 in mine it might be 6.1 but it is unique it is registered in the brain by the time you are born anything apart from that it either throws it out or converts it into fat it's very simple logic and that fat first starts accumulating on your liver on your thyroid on your glands and it starts fluctuating the hormonal secretions of this because the weight has been put over it and there where the problem lies so getting the right constitution is important it does not matter what you eat of course certain traits are made from the time you are born if you are born into a particular family which is eating certain things you become accustomed to eat certain things but that does not mean it is good for you 
I've seen people because where you are born is not in your hands. You might you might be naturally tamed to eat more meat, but you might be born in a family which is completely against meat. So you will develop all kind of inflammatory disorders. This things was studied few years back by a scientist and they and they segregated it into something called as a blood group. So they said there is a blood group A which can digest vegetables very well. You can you can look up on it. There is a blood group B which can digest both. You know there is some study done that. Yeah. So it was done over a period of time, and these principles were used. These Ayurvedic principles he studied into this what we call as pharmacogenetics, and this thing was avoided. Because they understood, you do not pick up your family, you do not pick up where you are born. So you are created with a linear thoughts in particular convention, but that might not be right for you. There have been people from a particular community who have come to me. Them suffering from psoriasis from a we have a Jain community in our country, you know, who does not even eat something which is grown under the soil. So they come to me and they are suffering from you know a lot of psoriasis, everything, and they take a lot of medications. They have done Ayurveda, Panchakarma, everything. So they come to me and I ask them, okay, are you very much rooted to your religion? No, no, I want to get all right. So I just cure them by giving them garlic, just garlic, <laughs> two pods of garlic morning, evening. Within fifteen days, everything is reversed. Fifteen days, not even much. She is with me. She will tell you. So we don't even give any medication. Nothing is required. They have gone through all your blood purifications, bloodletting, what you do, you know, colon cleansing, nothing. Else. So very important to understand what is required by the body. I've seen a lot of yoga people. They suddenly leave meat. They have been eating meat all their life, but suddenly the yoga culture hits them and they leave meat. And and these people have lots of issues. You know, they become cranky. They are unable to stay. They they put up that I'm I'm calm. They're very cranky. They are unable to adjust. Everything goes downwards in their life. They're not understanding why they are doing it. After two three months. It becomes an obsession because I have given a meat for three months. I have to still continue with it, and everything happens. You know, they get bone pains, muscle pains. They are crying for unnecessary reasons. They are unable to cope up. So you know, one of the students had come to me and and convinced her that you know, come, let's eat lamb. And three days she ate lamb. All her all her symptoms went away. So one year she had not eaten. So these things also you have to understand that your body is not concerned. For What you eat and what you not is only concerned with sufficing this mass, which is created of five elements, as you might say. It doesn't matter. The milk and the liquor has the same element. Yeah. Can I say so that idea of you know there are different cultures around the world that adapted over time to their you know what's available for them, and that's become their constitution. When you come to a country like the U.S. Everyone has, you know, immigrated from other areas. You know, how do you? What is? Do they change their constitution based on where they live? Do you think, or do they? Do they come with certain inherited? See again, ag- yeah. If I get your question and the word constitution, if you're asking about, are you asking about in terms of the Ayurvedic constitution or in general the constitution? In general. Okay, fine. So in general, see the constitution never changes. You adapt. Yes. Now, uh, I'll give you a very um, quick example of this. If I'm not finding the right point of it. Like let us say a person who comes from a Scandinavian country and he comes here. Now, if you see the history of Scandinavian countries, these countries are covered in snow for six months, seven months of the year. So there is practically no food. So the cannibalism started first there. It did not started in Africa because in Africa there is there are no deserts. If sometimes we think of Africa, a lot of time people show deserts, you know, cannibalism. But in Africa there are more forests. in africa you know are there are more trees in africa than there are in florida but in scandinavia this was not the conditions so the only thing available there was meat and when meat was not there people used to die the first instance if you read the history book cannibalism started from there so what does this tell you that their bodies are more adapted to eat meat they can assimilate it well 
So if you see a person from the Scandinavia, you will never find him very obese in spite of eating 10-20 burgers. Because his body can digest it. Those kind of enzymes, you can call it carnitin, leptin, the resistance is not there. If a person comes from an equatorial region like India, you know, where there is a lot of availability of pulses, food, sunlight is abundant, you know, water retention is there. So the because there is so much of abundance, we, you know, the tendency to eat food which is light in nature because body because body doesn't spend that much resources on digesting food it has a lot of amenities to create heat because as I told you first the whole concept is of heat you have to keep your body warm but what is death it is absence of heat a dead body is cold similarly any system in your body gets cold it is going to die we can see it in diabetes when blood supply gets cut the part becomes cold and you have to cut it off same thing in the body that body body tries to create heat either in a macro form or in a micro form either it be the eggs the sperms or your liver or your entire body so it requires heat to function that heat can be directly formed from the sun or from the food what you eat or in the yoga what we say we do by the yogic breathing so when you where this heat is abundant the body is not able to digest is not required to digest this heavy food so light foods, people became more ever, you know, more accustomed to eat this light food. So this was how it was there. Lot of travel never used to take place. Societies were confined to their points. People were confined to their points. There was this local community, local farming. The milk was there. Everything was there. Now once you start moving towards a different this, the body first confuses itself. The first kind of people who come there, they find it very difficult to digest the food. They get diarrhea, they get vomiting, they get immunosuppressing, you know, immunological disorders. It depends upon how it is adjusted. When the second generation comes, it becomes a little bit easy. Now, if you see the history of uh, certain disorders, you know, there are certain immunological disorders in, in, in the US itself. I'll stick myself to the United States. So if you see the history of psoriasis, you see the history of dementia, you see the history of Alzheimer's, you'll find it in a particular ethnicity group more. Why? Because the gut has not adjusted. Yesterday only when I was giving a lecture, some people asked me what is the question of dementia. I say that it has got to do with the gut. In Ayurveda it is given. But people never used to believe. Now it is believed that there is a vagus nerve which carries this germs to the brain. So the new therapy has come that to cut the vagus nerve. So those people who are more liable to get this inflammatory disorders like Parkinson's or dementia, they cut the vagus nerves. So that the they do not reach there. So here lies your answer that as these people come to a particular land where the atmospheric conditions are completely different from the conditions they have been brought you know they are likely bound to change because you are eating more food and there is no atmosphere required for it to digest it because in a Scandinavian country you eat an entire reindeer you are going to digest it because it is so cold if you eat the same meat here you are going to get problems like similarly if I am eating lot of oil and I am working in cotton fields I can digest it but if I eat the same oil because my ancestors were eating in a controlled environment I am going to get disease so there is a problem is that which environment you are mimicking in United States also there are different topographical environments if you go to California it was a desert if you go this side it was a glacial environment now whatever lakes you are getting here are big or glacial valleys earlier it was all covered by snow as the glaciers receded it cuts into fjords and they become a glacial valley Similarly, like a Yosemite Valley or this valley, it is a glacial valley. So, that time, these things of cold cuts, bread, what you eat, eat gave you a lot of benefits. Now, you are staying in controlled environments. Even if it is winter or summer, it doesn't make a difference. Your houses are heated 24-7. You are walking into malls which are have a controlled environment 24-7. So, not exposing yourself to sunlight. Only time when you walk and do this, it is fine. So, what kind of a food you require? completely changes from what ethnicity you have come from. You have to understand that here you have to have food which is easily digestible, which is not going to cause much problem on your system. So the only adulterants, what I told you, the, the evils of modern society are the sugars, the refined sugars, which are going to cause you this problem. As long as you are eating something which is natural, which is not man-made, generally your body is okay with it. It might not give you that much trouble. But that is not the case now. So the dynamics have completely changed. There was a time when I used to grow something in my farm field and it was going to get distributed into the farm. If whatever remains, it was exported out. Now you have got big, big farms. These big farms have to be 
installed with GMO crops. A lot of people say that we don't want GMO crops, but it is not possible. You cannot have organic farming on a large scale. It is impossible. Because in the large scale, if you erode the soil so much, the oxygen reaches deep inside, the soil becomes infertile. So you require this kind of a crops because you're killing off forests. So this is a new mechanized things, modern thing which is going to come to your system. And you cannot stay away from it. So the whole question in today's world lies not of ethnicity of adaptation. The adaptation goes to the time that your body system has not changed from the time evolution has taken place. It still rises with the sun and sets with the sun. It doesn't matter if you are working somewhere, we are working late nights. You are still going to get problems. If you, if you see the pilots who are, who are continuously flying overseas, and if you, if you take their health position after, why they have a shell life of so many years? See a pilot, a so pilot won't be able to fly continuously international for a long period of time. He'll first do domestic and then. Because these people have done these studies, they know that over a period of time, if he does that, he's more likely to have this dementia, Alzheimer's and this problem because his body is not adjusting. His body is going into a toss. So same thing, you know, when different ethnicities come here, we mix, we combine our foods, we create, bring our spices here, we are using it. If this methodology of using the salt cooking methods are installed, I don't think so much of a problems would be done. Of course, whatever ethnicity you belong to, if it is a pure ethnicity, you know, you are coming from a same lineage now, then those things can be applicable to your children. But nowadays there are a lot of mixed ethnicities, you know, you know, different ethnicities mix, new ethnicities are created. So it is very difficult to account for how they will react to this change situation or whether this, this is a new form of evolution we are seeing. But what, as we say, what the sages said, the foundations remain the same. They are still going to be six days. They are still going to be five elements. They are still going to be the sun. Your life cannot exist without the sun. And there is still going to be a place where the sun is not there. So you act accordingly. You use the right kind of cooking methodologies, uh, you will be good enough. Yeah. Um, when you spoke about these recommended ways of um, behaving, and then you speak about the pilot or say in a room like this, because we're in a city that you're not getting sunlight or in the kitchen, is you're not going to have sunlight. And I'm listening to the word adaptation come. I'm an architect, so sometimes I feel like I understand what the right thing is, but we we can't accomplish the right thing. Just that the pilot has chosen not to accomplish this. So what what is your view or how how would you suggest people cope with that? Are you are you are, is there are you is there a position where you just say, well, if, you, if you're doing the wrong thing, you know, if you're taking a knife and you're, you know, do, you know, that's it. There's nothing much to say about it. Or does the word adaptation really exist? See, it is a good question. Adaptations exist. As I said, unless and until you have a problem, don't fix which is not broken. But if you have a problem, then you have to really introspect whether your job is more important or whether that health line is more important. For example, a lot of people come to us, come to me and say, I'm working in a movie industry. I have to do night shifts. You know, big, you, say, you tell it to your body. If you have come here, you must have tried everything and come to me because my patterns are really very difficult to follow. So it is not working. So what is the use if you're going in a shoot and you're getting this big flashlights, you know, getting a vertigo attack? Is it of any use? You tell me that, take, give me something or tell me something. Because your body will not throw up system things till it can cope up like if i've got diabetes today if i got blood sugar i've been diagnosed is it mean that yesterday i was not diabetic this process has started from five years when the body cannot cope up it will throw off disease once it throws off you cannot do the repairing structure you have to go back else you will just be you know like fixing one seal taking out another seal so same thing so when you're working in a particular environment as you said that you know with, as the industrial revolution starts, each one has to earn his bread, pay his mortgage. So certain things needs to be done. But these tips which I've told you, these tips, I don't feel are things which you cannot incorporate in your life. There are 365 days in the year. Even if you do it for 265 days, you're still doing your body a well of good. It's not that you have to go on do it every time. But that awareness should be there. If you're going out for a party and it is already 6.30 down. See, you, you rely on vegetable soups. You rely on something, have a heavy breakfast. 
because you have gone out on a vacation and you have missed your time that choice is in your hands because we can understand we can understand you are on a vacation but your body won't understand because as said body has got nothing to do with what you do. even getting up and going to the restroom is a privilege if my body feels i cannot do it i'll do it in my seat we have seen people they have unable to get up they lose complete control over their defecation and urination why does the body do because it doesn't have strength it you cannot tell the body i am in a social structure don't do it here give me the strength to go to the restroom it is going to do it if your body feels the need that your resources are less it is going to make you blind it is going to give you weak eyesight because it says seeing is a bonus you can still survive by being blind you can still survive if you if you go bald you can still survive if you go deaf because the main function of the ears is to have balance not to hear hearing is a bonus so body will make you a vegetable but yet it will try to survive your vitals as we see in people who go in coma you know who are in like coma for like 10 years 12 years you know sometimes it is a financial burden to the entire family to keep them alive therefore we talk about euthanasia or you know this death so the person understands that i am a burden but he is helpless death is not coming to him because body is trying to support its system so crude life has got nothing to do with social life if it adapts i'm not saying it doesn't adapt some people adapt some people eat 30 chilies a day 40 chilies a day they adapt we have seen magicians who are eating glass and surviving they so your body is so strong that you adapt but it comes with a constant practice that awareness must be there if if you if you feel this is the kind of a job i am supposed to do for a period of 10 years and this is what it is going to require then this awareness must be there what kind of a changes i can do what kind of a minimal damage i can do and when i need to pull out can i go on doing this for my entire life like if i see clients if i am a very successful person i can see clients 24/7 there is no shortage of work for me is my body able to do it i cannot say no but i have clients i have to take their calls i have a choice i can say i want to work two hours it doesn't matter how many people come so that choice always rests with you only if the awareness is there or not that is a different question so i don't believe adaptation should be at the cost of health so in my clinical practice there are a lot of people come i tell them to take a demotion if things are not working out or you don't take the treatment because it is not going to help you there is no magic remedy in the world which is going to help you so you have to stop it because you if you if you keep feeding the cause the effect is not going to diminish you cannot counteract the cause by giving something else you cannot nullify the cause you cannot say i am eating sugar now i'll eat something bitter so the sugar is nullified it is never going to happen a lot of people who are diabetics they want to eat sweets they'll put two more doses of insulin and eat sweet it is never going to happen you are going to get insulin resistance there will come a time when insulin won't work into your body the sugar is still going to remain there you cannot fool your body like that so that is this that is the very prime example for what we give as adaptation so there comes a time you have to listen to your body and if you are getting all these disorders you have to take a break if not you can sustain but the quality of work will diminish would you say a little more about the water uh, consumption um my my family we have kidney and liver issues and so we all of us have very extreme thirst um and then of course you know quality quality water is a big issue of course um but just in terms of what is is normal see as i say drink water when thirsty but if you are getting excessive thirst then your water is not getting metabolized it is causing poison in your body remember one thing water itself is a big poison if it is not digested properly so if you are getting thirsty all the time that means of course which you have diagnosed very well the liver and the kidneys are not working well they are totally clogged up with salts so the first thing if you are feeling thirsty is to cut down on your sugar intake is to eat very light food and you make these changes what i have said to eat on time if you do that it gives your liver a natural protection to throw off the salts once the salts are thrown off by the liver your water consumptions your thirst itself will go down the second important thing what you can do is that always you know boil your water with little bit of cardamom you know take like two cups of water boil boil it with cardamom and reduce it to one cup this 100 ml of water whatever you do or you can do like huge quantity like 
put 10 20 cardamoms put 30 40 uh, you know like uh, 2 3 liters of water boil it down to 1 liter don't drink this water at a go drink it very slowly whenever you feel like thirsty just drink one or two sips and keep it two three days you might not find any changes on the third day you will see your thirst has automatically gone down and in, in, in the urine it is first clearing off you know it is throwing off lot of salts and then eventually the thirst will go down so whenever you are feeling too much thirsty it is a sign that your body is not digesting water if you feed it with more waters your joints will go weak first thing mm -hmm. your stomach will go weak your eyesight will diminish your hearing aid will diminish and all these things happen so water is the biggest elixir but the worst poison as i always say and different waters have different different properties if you take a water from a lake it has got different property water from the sea different property the rain water which doesn't touch the earth different property the rain water which touch the earth and you collect different property the water stored overnight different property fresh water different every water has got different property in uh, it's not like this water and it has been completely mentioned when we also say we get water from this lake from that lake from this place from that place the soil it is there from everything matters so if you if you don't use it judiciously then fine always store if you're getting if you're not sure of water store it in copper vessel but then filter it out and then store it in the glass so you can do it like overnight you can store this in copper vessels and but see to it that you are maintaining those copper vessels well if you are getting a good copper you know from the bronze period what we say you know a lot of time in these earlier antique shops and all they have this lot of bronze vessels use those bronze you don't use the copper what you get nowadays so that way you will you know you will make the water much more palatable in your body much more assimilative in your body if, if you have little bit of gold always warm the gold and put it inside the water you take a gold stick and whenever you are drinking water you know if you are drinking in the morning just warm it put it inside it will give you much more benefit you know all these things silverware if you have a whole lot of people in the from the colonists there have a lot of silverware silver was priced that time but we just keep it in the uh, you know just for display we don't use it use it you drink milk if you are a milk drinker drink it in silver vessel it will increase your brain three times more four times more cow milk cow's milk cow's milk goat's milk always but see to it that you get a good cow you know this is again what we call as the a2 milk use the a2 milk you know it comes from it comes from a species which you can digest you know because over a period of time maybe 5000 10000 years ago the species of cows mutated so in certain amino acids change and they got converted into one amino acid what we call a1 which is not digestible by humans so therefore we got this bloating when you call yourself lactose intolerant so go for the a2 milk if you're not sure of which cow there are many species of cows who give a2 milk in your united states there is a species of cow what we call as a gersni cow it comes from germany it has a slightly golden milk use that milk you'll find it it is there so that will give you much more benefits so like that if you use this small small things from your day to day life it gives you a lot of benefits use in a silver vessel if you are a, if you're a milk drinker use it in a silver vessel always warm the milk let it cool down and drink do not drink milk straight away from the refrigerator cold never drink anything cold use minimum only use refrigerator for things which are utterly required because there are a lot of cfc gases you know yeah. so so you, if you put it once inside those gases act on it if you want to store milk in the refrigerator put it in the earthen vessel and store it in the refrigerator don't use this plastic containers for more if you're getting very good milk if you're really a milk drinker you know it, it is little bit of effort first time when you do it but once you go on doing it over a period of time it becomes a natural habit so you you will see the changes you can always give yourself a go for two months three months in these changes and see what changes it makes to your body is making sustainable changes go on. if not you can always go back to your old ways i always say you know something which you take you know start making these small changes and then, you also eating cold food yeah well. same yeah. thing because your body has to generate heat what i told you the more it has to generate the more your certain organs are going to damage because body has to pull it from there 
apart from liquor which generates heat there is no other cold food which generates heat so only cold thing you want to have is have liquor how about glass glass is good glass you can use it contains silica it is good the old and old type glass is what you get they are still better but new glass also thick glass if you use it's good enough for so cooking i cook a lot yeah yeah cooking glass is borosil is good because it it is made from silica it is the same material you can use it. so it's a trade there's an a2 on the website um, that you can locate the a2 enzyme and what in our area if you are if you are if you are milk intolerant yeah. only then if you can digest milk it doesn't make a difference some people have this you know then for them use it h a2 u a2 h2 how do you spell it's a2 a and then the oh, So that here it's far out in Long Island. So the other option is just as both of which doesn't have silica. Yeah, I can use goat milk. It's still better. So what do you think about? I mean, I understood what you said about GMOs. I happen to do a lot of work on GMO labeling. I try to eat only organic. And um, so what do you think about that? If one makes a choice, I mean, I understand your. You're, you're right. Maybe what you're saying is that we can eat what we like to eat if we eat well, if we eat well and behave well. So, I mean, I guess there's really no argument that pests. I mean, again, it's not to adapt. I mean, pesticides are poisonous. See, as I, as I, as I, as I said, this this question answers your previous questions of adaptation. without gmo crops the world will go hungry i'm not advocating it i myself do not advocate it or you have to create a culture the original farm culture where every county or every village is producing something and whatever remains it goes into the mainstream but with so much of consumerism in your country itself you it now see you just go around there are so many eateries here everyone is serving meat everyone is serving now let us say tomorrow the vegan culture goes up and everyone stops eating meat so so this hotels they won't go out of business they will start producing something they'll offer you shakes it will offer you juices how will you produce it organically is it possible to produce such a mass scale on organic it is not possible because farms cannot survive without forest if you go to the ancient cultures there was a plan when there was a forest which was dedicated to the gods there was a forest which was dedicated to the animals which acted as a buffer and there was a forest which was dedicated to the village in which farming took place so it was a small scale farming and this small small scale farming contributed to everything when and it was earlier than in your country in a place called in new england and after that when the colonists came they started farming with oxen people started cutting off trees and they never harvested it back so all the grasslands got eroded and they got weeded by the grasses which came from europe which had strength to graze the plants but they did not have much ben medicinal benefits so nothing grew it went on went on went on till 1787 when your uh, ordinance of freedom came that was the first time when this act was stopped when what happened in the south they were farming wheat north they were farming something and in the between when the ordinance of freedom was slavery, slavery was ended the industrialization started still again this practice started started and i think so probably in 1887 the morrill act came you can search it up if you have worked in that that morrill act was the first time each state was granted a university and a fund by the government to start agricultural farming yes and then all these farms which were broken down started been converted into national forest reserves and so the forest cover group lot of people say government has not done anything in fact your government after the moral act is responsible for the green cover you see around else there was nothing here so you would have been forced to use gmo much sooner than now it is now that you are just outsourcing it from out, somewhere else same thing has happened in all industrialists because of the demand of consumerism all the forests have been cut down So the land is not fertile. Our India itself, we have seen droughts for two years. It might get converted into a desert, the most fertile land in the world. We might be seeing a desert in twenty, thirty years there, if if forest cover is not grown. So you you cannot survive with the amount of consumerism which is required. 
cannot survive. And if you say organic, organic, then only a few people will be available to it. So the whole point is that your body is able to digest anything. It is not that you cannot digest pesticides or you can digest anything. Only thing you have to adapt yourself to do it. If you if you eat on time, sleep on time, you strengthen your kidneys, it throws it out. Very simple thing, as I say, you bring vegetables from the market, just injure it with a small blade. Put it in warm water and immediately put it in cold water. All the pesticides go out. You do simple things, fine. If you are talking about crops which have been put with hormones and grown, you can't do much about it. Or else you have to grow some forest cover, only then the soil will be fertile and only then these crops can be grown. Otherwise only genetically modified crops can grow, which require less nitrogen fixation, less are water resistant, they require less water and they can grow in any conditions. So now how much of the population will be able to afford it fine. And secondly, as I always say, there is nothing called as green. Green is something which is less green than something which was before. You always compare the green index with something which was not green. So this was, this had a more environmental impact. So this has a less environmental impact. So this is biodegradable. But anything what you produce as green has to be produced from the earth. So it has an impact. We do not see the impact in that bigger evolution. We are only seeing the impact from a consumerism point of view. So that all things, you know, those are like bigger, bigger things in evolution what we talk. This is another point of debate. Maybe not, not related to the talk we are having here. But just to answer your question because you talked about GMO crops. I see the only thing is that you have to develop a way and adaptability to digest it and not freak about it. If it's a way to go in the near future, we never know. On, 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 on one hand, there is a lot of pressure on the world governments to feed their population. And on the second hand, the only way they can feed their population is the drought resistant or pesticide resistant crops, which we cannot use because they might have some long lasting effect on your own genetics. Who knows? But as we say, we have adapted, right? When sugar came, no one knew about sugar. But when sugar came, we adapted. It took a lot of process. It takes a lot of process to create sugar. If you go to a sugar factory, you will come to know. It is not easily made thing. It requires a lot of water. It requires a lot of electricity to produce sugar. So it was a new component. It came. We used it. We adapted. We are still fighting it. We are still... It is the biggest genetic changer of the world. Yet we are using it. Nobody is talking about sugar. So if you have adapted to sugar, you will adapt to GMO crops also. But isn't there something to be said also with long-term sustainability? I understand that there are pressures, there's consumer producing pressures um, to produce and these, you know, whether it's through GMO, whether it's you know, through large industrial um, farming. But there will be a time where that, even that won't be sustainable. So, and it affects, if you look at the bigger picture, it affects all our, our, uh, our health, right? I mean, there's, you can take adaptability to a certain point, but, you know, if we don't take steps in however we can our, to um, dial back those so-called advances, so that is what I said. to see more, you know... You have to start at your home, like these things, as I told you start with earthen vessels so you support the local economy mm -hmm. if you start with earthen vessels there will be potters who will be doing it you, you talk about make in america buy in america start it start buying from your local farm you know the more people support the local farms in creating unpasteurized milk mm -hmm. the government will be forced to make a change isn't marijuana now legalized in your country why because the government is making the change it is required by you people if you don't make it then it is not going to be there so if those changes are made, I, I particularly think that it will it has to come from you people. Because there was a time when consumerism was at such a height, you wanted everything on a platter. That see it is a it is a capitalist society. It has been from the time being even when money was not there. There were sections in this world who always wanted to conquer another section. We all see in ancient times there were tribes with amulets and all who were rich used to conquer other lands. It was always about capitalism to feed their own kind. Kingdoms were not made because, because they were not self-sufficient. There was a growing discontent and they thought that we have to raid some lands which are self-sufficient. So that's how it works. So it is always the people who put the pressure on the government. So now it's such a, it's your, your, your country is like a, like, like a flowing engine. 
This every city, every time you go, you have got big malls. Yesterday I went to a place of Albany. There is big malls. You know, maybe to a population of three thousand five hundred, four thousand, five thousand, ten thousand people. They are big. So, and there might be these buffet lunches there which people are having. You know this. So who is eating this? Is it being recycled or is this being created every day? So if it is being created every day, how many fowls are getting killed? How many vegetables are you requiring? Now you are having these amazing cuisines around the world. We, everywhere you see, you see big, big breads, vegetables. Now people are become, turning vegan, so they are having this wheat grass juice, this juice, alpha alpha juice. So where will you produce all this? Availability is there. You are demanding it. There is not only one section of society. So you have to make these choices in your home. You have to put more effort on the spices. You have to create it yourself. You have to educate your children in eating the right ways, telling them not to fuss about eating, but it is something which should get over. Once it becomes a part of your lifestyle, you know, not exposed to diseases, your demands will come down. Now, why is the demand for organic food? Because people felt that inorganic food is is create causing havoc in their system. It is clogging their kidneys. It is clogging this. But the demand was created by you. There was a time when there was no penicillin or no DEXA or no brufen. But a time came in the Western world that people wanted quick relief. So these medicines were created. Once these medicines are created, it is going to be marketed in the big way. So you are going to abuse it. It is not the pharmaceutical companies who made the abuse. It is the people who made the abuse. They have a pain pop in the wonder pill. If you see the, if you go on the internet and you search the advertisements when these pills were released, 70s, 80s, 90s, you see there were advertisements like this, magic pill. Oh, now you don't have to worry about the headache. Just pop in a pill. And you are ready to go to work. So you created the market. And now you are saying that okay, it's too much. We go back. Government will say we are getting the money. We'll go back. We legalize marijuana. We we'll legalize turmeric. We we'll legalize this salt. Then you will start taking that. So it can never come. This balance has to always be there. If everyone turns non-vegetarian, then then the forest will die. Like like happened in Germany. The black forest has no no animals. If everyone turns vegetarianism, the forest will die because domestication cannot come without violence. You think you are not doing violence, but to create such crops, you have to cut down forests. When you cut down forests, species are lost, animals are killed. So you, yours, so there is nothing like it. this food chain will never go without violence. So the only option is that you, you make these necessary choices, whatever herbs and spices you want, you can grow in your kitchen. And I have seen in some modern architectural homes, they create this racks in which there are, you know, like uh, soil is kept. They put water from up and certain certain spices are there and just spices come out. Mm. I've seen some, some modern architectural ki kitchens who have done by that. So you know those are certain things you can have in your house. You, know, you, can, you can create, you can use limited spices when creating food, whatever meats you are using. You just select those meats which you are using. You eat it well. And if you do that well, you educate people. That's what I have been doing in 13 years. You know everyone, everyone benefits because I think at the bottom line everyone wants to be healthy. No one wants to be sick. It is not that people are not willing to spend money. If you are coming to me as a, as a healthcare provider and you are spending money, you are not against spending money. You will give me $20 more. But you want a one-stop solution. You don't want a part solution. You don't want something, okay, I am feeling good. You want a solution which will enable you to transcend all your ailments. So this can only come when you make the sacrifice. If I tell you leave the coffee or don't come to me, only then you will do it. But if you say allow me one cup of coffee and if I am manipulating, then I am earning money off you. I am, so I am not giving the right advice. Because even that one sip of coffee is going to make the hormonal change in your body. So can you transcend it? Are you ready to give up certain things in your life and see that health? Only then this change will come. Still you find alternate solutions. The demands will always be met by supplies of capitalism. So it cannot stop. You only create the need. It's like marketing. As I said in earlier times, in the Coca-Cola ad, which I give an example, uh, in, I retains image every one third of the slide. So in earlier times when Coca-Cola company came, after every half of the frame, they put a Coca-Cola ad. So when you saw the movie, we did not see the Coke, but it got registered in the break. So the moment you came out in the break, everyone went to the Coke stall and started drinking Coca-Cola. So it is there. You are going to create the need. It's going to happen. People have to earn money. They'll do it. Like you see, you see in this science fiction movies, an enzyme comes or a vaccine comes which puts into your body and something regrows. So it is our training and after six months you will see the government or FDA has released or given 
appears to access to a vaccine which will cure this. And suddenly, because we have already known this fact or seen it in a movie. So, part, so you know, this, these things go on happening. That is a completely different topic to discuss. But because it has come up, I'm telling you. So these changes, if you make, these are universal changes. You stay in Scandinavia, you stay in Africa, you stay in Australia, it doesn't make a difference. Eat on time, sleep on time, stay away from sugar, drink water judiciously, use salt in a particular way, give importance to your utensils and use spices. These spices have been given to you, onion, garlic, cinnamon. Use them well, you can use them to enhance your system, use them as medicines, there are a lot of things you can do with them. Do you want to say anything about um, how, uh, since they're not just benign substances, they're very powerful, how do we know when we're, how, how can, can you give us a few tips on what to observe in ourselves to monitor the degree which we should include these things in our diet, like when maybe we're getting too much water or too much as you said that when you, whenever something comes unnatural, you know, you're drinking too much or you're not happy with your system. In Ayurveda, what we say a very simple thing is given that if you're unhappy, you're diseased. So I give a very simple example that if a person comes to me who is like 6 feet 2 inches, I don't know what, what is the equivalent in you, but I'll use the non-metric system what is followed in my country. That someone is a very tall guy who comes to me and he tells me, okay, I want to increase my height by 2 inches. You're already tall, why do you want to increase? But he said, I'm ready to do anything. And a mother comes with a child who's, who is very unfit, who is obese, who, who looks unhealthy. And she says, no, you know, put some sense in him, you know, he, he requires some treatment. And I ask him and he says, I'm happy eating. So Ayurveda says the first guy requires a treatment, the second guy doesn't. Because the first guy is unhappy. If you are happy with your street, nothing requires to be done. But if you are feeling this and this awareness comes that something is not right. It could be a mental thing that you are not enjoying your work, you are feeling too difficult to get out of the bed or you are looking for too many options around you. Suddenly, you're, when I am looking for some tips, then you're, there is something not right with you. If, if you are totally right with yourself, you won't be here. So there is something there, you are searching for something. So that introspection should be there. But that introspection or that search should not be limited to certain magic remedies or certain options. These things should start at home. So make start making those changes. See how it affects your system. Of course, it is a body. It is going to get disease. You're going to fall ill. You're going to have cough. You're going to have fever. That is how the body works. But if you're having something which is long standing, you're getting irritated much. You're not getting much concentration in your work. You're not sailing through your relationships in a nice way. You're getting angry. You're making very much opinions. You're getting bone pains, unnecessary pain. Nothing excites you more, neither food, nothing, then there is something wrong. So start making those changes. So that's how I feel this, this pointers, if you are inwardly aware, it comes. When we're, when we're sitting, eating, how do, you, how do you recommend, I'm thinking, I'm thinking in terms of circulation and, and what you say, a few words about that, like when, you know, when we're sitting Indian style, does it matter when, when should we, should we think about, how should we think about posture and standing versus sitting? While eating yourself? In, in eating and, and, and See, in while general. eating, the first thing I'll always say, never eat up standing. I don't mind, this is still a better position. But if possible, sit down and eat. It is quite possible you are, we are incorporating so many changes in our life. You have got, today you have got heated flows and everything. For eating, it takes hardly 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's not a big deal. So eat sitting down. If you have problems with the colon, if you want to digest well, sit down. Concentrate on your food and eat. Don't talk with anyone. Don't take calls. Just eat. Because that is the reason you are earning your bread. You are working so hard to feed yourself. You are not earning for this house and for gadgets. You are earning for that. So if you do that thing well, which takes hardly 30 minutes of your time in the entire day, most of your diseases are gone. If you eat food while walking or, you know, eating and you're talking on the phone, it is going to cause you problems. Does it matter whether we're sitting cross-legged or well we're I think, I think how you sit. Sit down. Doesn't matter. Sit you sit in Padmasan, fine. You know, fine. If you can put it. If you're not, sit however it is. If not, you can sit like this also. Okay. Or sit, sit on a pillow, put a this and eat. Doesn't matter that you have to sit down and eat. Doesn't matter. Or sit down. 
don't sit like upright in a chair where a system is like this. The gravity should work. If you have got like a growing sunlight coming into your house, always eat facing the sunlight. Or sunlight should be on your back or something falling on this. So you know, so certain things are there where you are exposing your food to that. Always have your kitchen where you have got ample sunlight. Always have an exhaust open so you are getting the wind. Once your cooking is done, just close it off. It doesn't matter if you have an exhaust fan. So you know that how when you are cooking certain things like meat and all, if it goes, it makes it more digestible. Because you are getting microbes from the, from the environment. In, in this closed environment, there is no, no exchange of air. The microbes become stagnant. A lot of people don't understand even to digest oxygen, you require 32 kinds of microbes. If they are not in your body, you will die of oxygen. Oxygen is a killer gas. Ask someone who climbs the mountains, he will tell you. So you require something in your body to break down oxygen. So nothing is easy. Everything is chemical. And therefore these things have been studied by these people over a period of time and facilitated into certain things so that it can be easy for you. In earlier times they were molded into traditions what we call as our culture. So our grandma used to say don't eat. In your culture also it will be there. It is not there, it is not there. Only we, we don't, we don't, we say oh, it's outdated. But you have to adapt, we need to talk about adaptation. These things have to be adapted in the modern world. And these small changes if you do, it will go a long way in making your culinary experience very good. You want to eat food, enjoy food and you eat it, you have, then you will understand who is cooking the good food. If you yourself have this taste of spices, only then you can go to a restaurant and say this is good food. If you yourself don't know what is good food, anything which is presented well, you will say it's a good food. <laughs> so you should know what is there, you should know the taste of cinnamon, everything, what is put inside. How this meat tastes with cinnamon? How this meat tastes with fennel? I am cooked it raw, I am cooked it with barbecue sauce and doing a barbecue. I have charcoaled it. So what it is causing in my body? So those all things are important. Earlier times people did not have all these spices so they used to take the meat and just grill it. Add some salt and then slowly slowly sauces started developing because they wanted to preserve it. They did not have anything to, did not have access. Nothing used to grow here, no pulses, nothing. You were the, uh, till world, after till World War II, you were the largest producer of soy. 73% of US exports was soybean. And once you grow soybean in a soil, after 15 years, the land becomes dead. Nothing grows there. Mm -hmm. So then soybean was exported to other countries to grow. Why? Because it was eaten by pigs. Soybean is not fit to consume. Soybean is only grown because it can be eaten by pigs. Because if pigs eat soybean, their pork becomes tasty. So Netherlands, who is the highest exporter of pork, imports soybean. All these things, you know, nowadays is very important for people to learn when they talk about diet. We just talk about diet in two linear ways. Organic, non-organic, pesticide, non-pesticide. That is not going to take you long. It is going to confuse you a lot. So beyond this, think what you can do. How I can cook the food. How I can make it more palatable. How I can make it more tasty. What effect it is giving onto your body. Don't go into this follies of sattvic food, tamasic food, rajasic food. It is... It, 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 it is not applicable. It is just for people who want to debate on stupid things. So I am using it word with very responsibility. So just do the basics right. If you do the basics right, you will get good good food. And so talking about the basics, I mean, you know, talking about the basics, I mean, I don't know if it works this way. Is there something that we can do, any spices that we can use in the morning or at night to enhance? the process of waking and sleeping. I know you mentioned fenugreek for women in the morning, but is there something that can be used at night? Yeah, you can use, like, a lot of time it depends, you know, for, for example, in the night, most of the times people use spices which, which are for digestion, you know, which can digest your food or induce you good sleep. So there is, you can use use of poppy seeds, or very simply, again, as I say, that this, this bishop's weed, in its family, there is a similar spice. I don't remember the the modern equivalent of it. I'll just give you the name. Or very simple coriander seeds. You know, if you, if you take a powder of coriander seed in the night, you know, it will induce you very good sleep. It will make a very good digestion. But it all depends on if you really want to use it or not. In, in general, if you're getting any problems, use it. If not, the use of spices in your food is more than it. 
it's not like if I take this spice, I'll be more healthy. But if you're finding this problem, like women who have crossed 30s, 35s, you know, always recommended start with fenugreek. You keep your life healthy. Don't run much. You know, always say you know, a lot of women start running. The more you run, the more your joints will damage. Always walk. So don't go to the gym and break the treadmill. You know, always walk. It will keep your joints strong. Then you won't have problems. Women, if the if the bone mass goes weak, then you'll get a lot of problems in your life. You know, so you'll start getting tumors, you'll start getting lymphomas, all these things happen because bones become weak. You know, the calcium absorption goes haywire. It gets stuck in different, different forms. So, you know, keep it flowing. Keep your body supple. So, if you do this well, I think so 80% you won't have any problem. It is not that you should not enjoy. Go out, have that beer, have that junk food, but with responsibility that I can digest it. So you've had that thing come back to your normal self once again. This cycle you do with awareness. The same thing you put put in your children, you make them aware. Not as a reprimand, but but because you are doing it, it is a forming a part of your culture. You can start your own food culture. You do not have to rely on anyone else's culture. Because they are doing it, we should do it. Sometimes I say, you know, the Indians were doing it, so we will. It is not. We are not different than you. We are the same body. We also don't. We also use a lot of junk food. We also are suffering from the same diseases what you are suffering. In fact, more. Because we get everything for granted. But that is, that is not. So use this, support your local farm, find out people who are doing good job, support them, give them $10 more, buy from them. The more people buy, the more cost cutting comes down, you get good good supplies. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the basis. Exercise like, do aerobic exercises, like yogic exercises. You know, don't do very, very heavy exercises unless they are, you're doing for some purpose. You know what we say in yoga, be aware of your breath, whatever exercises you're doing. So if you do this well with proper understanding, whatever exercises you're taking at proper time, whatever exercise you do early morning, empty stomach, don't do it whenever you get the time, your office is done. Okay, now I'll go for a yoga class. Don't do that. You know, do when you feel you are right. If you go to the yoga class, then only only do some exercises just stretching out don't do heavy exercises don't do the entire sequence so these are tips irrespective of whatever you're doing you know same thing goes for people who are teaching these things also if you teach them well then your clients will be much more healthier because eventually they are coming coming to you for for some benefits they're not coming to you to see whether you can teach them something much more better than someone else because if you have eaten that burger and you, and you think that uh, oh, I, want, I need to get it out of my system and tomorrow you go and you run 20, 10, 20 miles, it is going to go even more deeper into your tissues. It is not going to throw out. We have a thinking, I am going to burn that calorie. It doesn't happen that way. You have to rest. Therefore, in Ayurveda, we say langa means you have to fast. Only then it will digest. You don't have to run 20 miles. But I see people on the, after, after the, the Christmas Eve or New Year, they'll go and run as if, you know, their entire life depends on them. Uh, you get more problems. For five days, your joints will swell. Everything will happen, and you won't even know why it has happened. And then your kidney problems, your liver problems starts, because you are pushing these toxins into these excretory organs. And once your excretory organs become stiff, then you are exposed to disease. Then nothing can happen. It is like an engine which is covered with all all the dust particles increase. You can't do anything. So start when you feel. Unnecessary getting a lot of sweating, your sweat is smelling, foul smelling. You understand your system is not well. These small, small pointers, you don't have to go into a huge diagnosis. You will come to know yourself. So we in this modern world have exposure to a lot of cuisines. A lot of people are doing amazing work. We need to go, we need to enjoy everything. That's why we are living. But you need to have a good body to enjoy it. Only money won't suffice. So do this whenever in your house, follow the system, whenever you are outside, try to follow a pattern. I'm not saying don't go and don't party hard in the night, do that, but do with awareness. And if you do that well, I don't think so, there is any problem. Stay away from caffeine. First thing I say, don't use coffee, don't use tea. I always recommend use liquor, don't use coffee, don't use tea. First thing, yeah, don't use. It is going to cause you more problems. Unnecessary use is not required. Okay, it's a very cold weather, you are drinking it, it is fine. Hot weather, you are just not required. Why so, is the liquor safer than that? Liquor is safer because 
because it is made from grains it has been used over centuries so if you use it in a rice pay it is not going to cause you problem it is not if you mix that liquor with soda and all it is going to cause you problem yeah. um, but with coffee for example are there certain cultures like i come from a culture where coffee you know is a major crop or was a major crop how many years back coffee was invented 200 years back so are you saying coffee across the board is not good I mean, See what happens when you don't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee. But I what happens when a person addicted to coffee doesn't drink coffee? He shows the same symptoms as a person who is addicted to liquor. Mm -hmm. So understand, it is a lifestyle drink. Then drink it as a lifestyle drink. That's what. Okay. There are people who will think I don't want breakfast. It is fine, but I want coffee. Yeah. For example, like in the countryside, where people get up early in the morning to go work the field. I feel like that coffee that they have in the morning, you know, and they have, for the most part, they go to bed early, they have much more, like I feel like in this culture, we we are so active, very young, that the coffee makes it worse. But if you're in a culture where you're sort of, you know, you, you, you um, abide by a lot of, um, you know, some of what you shared with us today, and you have a more calmer lifestyle, that maybe the coffee is in, you know, ha may have a beneficial effect. See, effect. nothing in this world is not medicinal, if used with discretion. So as, I'm, as I said, that even if there are people who are eating burgers day in day, in China there are people who are eating raw meat, so do they die early? They don't have any disease. There are people who are eating only vegetarian so-called good food, so don't they have diseases? So it depends upon what you are following. As I said, coffee and tea are for people who stay in cold conditions where blood pressure is low. So it is fine. So if you use it in hot humid conditions, whenever your temperature soared about 20-25, it is going to cause you a problem. In the long run, it is going to make your heart weak. So it is about adaptive. If those people are suffering from any disorders, then the first thing is to stop the coffee. If they are not drink 10 cups, it doesn't make a difference. I'm not saying that anything is bad or anything if you eat everything accordingly to 